Good morning and welcome to Spring Valley Church. It is so good to have everybody uh, to join us here for worship this morning, uh, whether in person or you're watching uh, Facebook Live or later in the week. Uh, we're glad to have you and it's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, before I read uh, our call to worship this morning, I kind of want to give some context for the verse. Um, in 2 Corinthians, uh, Paul's writing a letter to sort of explain uh, the new covenant that uh, the followers of Christ have entered in. So 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So we're going to uh, usher the Lord in this place this morning with worship. Would you all stand and sing with us? Thank you. 
offer you this morning. I pray that the worship that we lift up to you this morning would exalt your name and bless you this morning. And I pray that you would be with us as we receive your word. It's in your name that I pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all here today, and of course, those of you who may be watching on uh, Facebook Live or later today on YouTube, welcome. Uh, we have a great morning ahead of us. We get to receive, finally, some new members that took the new members class way back in the spring, and of course, because of the pandemic, kept having to push it back, and along with that, we get to celebrate the baptism as well. So that's just a great time for our congregation to share in those things together. I also have just a couple of other announcements to make. Uh, as you, if you've been around, you know that we're using this QR code to receive our weekly bulletin. And uh, I want to really highlight that, especially this week. If you haven't been finding the link on our website to the uh, online bulletin slash connection card information, um, please, you know, know that it's there and you can find it in that way. But this week, there's a piece of information on there that we want to highlight, and that is that Hand to Hand is uh, doing something special for the holiday season. And the information for that uh, and the way that you can do this is directly correlated through these links, okay? Uh, so what's going on is, is in addition to the usual um, donations that they need for food, they are wanting to do something for Thanksgiving. So it's kind of like a, a virtual Thanksgiving basket minus the turkey. So all the other stuff that you would want in your Thanksgiving meal are things that they're trying to collect. And you can talk to Amy Seely directly if you know her. I don't see Amy right now, but uh, or you can contact the church office. But for many of us, just going through this link would probably be the easiest way for you to learn more and to uh, sign up to do that. And all the information's right there. So be aware that's kind of a, a neat way that we can be involved even during these crazy, weird times of pandemic and all that kind of stuff. Uh, in addition to that. Uh, we continue to need more help in the children's department as we continue to try to expand the classrooms that we want to open for older age groups. And so we need a solid handful of people to now start expanding into first grade and beyond. And so we would love to have, now we primarily need adults, 18 years old and older for that. There is a real need for that. So if you've been on the fence and thinking, ah, oh, somebody else will do it, Nobody else is doing it. <laughs> so um, if, if you're able to give a, a week, a, a month, or something to that respect, we will take it. We love it. We want to try to open all as much of the ministries as we can. And it's really just dependent on volunteers to take a turn and do it. Having said all of that, Candy Kermis would absolutely love to talk to you. And she's today, she's sitting in the very last row in the hub. And uh, so you can track her down, you can email her, you can text her, you can just get a hold of her, and she would love to, to share that information with you. Um, uh, uh, some family care news, first of all, May Eaton earlier in the week had a, a pretty significant knee replacement surgery, not just your average knee replacement, but there's a little more involved with uh, some arthritis and things like that as I understand it. She had that on Monday and returned home on Wednesday and was recuperating. I believe doing quite well. I'm getting a, I'm getting a head shake from her daughter. Yes, and uh, so praise God for that. Um, and then um, I believe on Thursday we got the news that Irene Steller, who by the way is our most senior member of our congregation at the age of 95, um, she's unable to worship with us very regularly, but she, she's very much a member of our congregation. Uh, her house caught on fire on Thursday. So um, now if, let me just give a caveat here. If, if you don't know Irene, she's got one of the most powerful personalities in a positive way of anyone I know. And so my understanding, her response to her at 95 years old, all alone in this house, the response she gave was, I'm not gonna let it get me down. So, and, I, and that is Irene to a T. Um, she's uh, living with her daughter right now. It's my understanding that um, 
Um, she would need new housing in the Elondale area. So if any of you know of some housing that might be available, it's unclear to me exactly if it would be, um, if she's gonna need to move permanently out of her home or not. I think that might be the case, but regardless, short-term, long-term, if you know some good housing situation, let us know and we'll be sure to pass that along to Irene. And then one final little um, different sort of family update information. Many of you probably aren't aware that Chad Campheis, who preached here several weeks ago on my behalf, our, our youth pastor, uh, is one incredible, either really, either really stupid or really disciplined person <laughs> because he, he is a runner who participated this weekend. Uh, this is going to sound a bit unbelievable. In a 100 mile run. Uh, in, was it Virginia or West Virginia? West Virginia. West Virginia. Um, he, he, he did it in just over 23 hours. He completed the race. So he took with him a Spring Valley team of supporters, a bunch of our college age um, members of our church. I think there was maybe nine of them that all went there to support nice. him and help him through the journey. And we just want to sort of celebrate that with Chad. He's been training for a long time, and um, it seems ridiculous to do that to me. Like, I don't like to drive 100 miles. I don't like to walk one mile. I can't imagine running a block. But uh, to run 100 miles, wow. Um, I look forward to hearing all about it when he gets back uh, later. He'll be back actually later today, I believe, is the plan. So um, we thank God that he's safe and healthy and that that group now returns home safe and healthy and all that stuff. So with that as our, our morning announcements, let's uh, go before our Lord in a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you on yet just a, a, an incredibly beautiful November Sunday. And uh, Lord, we thank you for the reminder that um, creation gives us of your gift to us, that you are such a generous God in so many ways. Lord, this morning we're mindful of Irene, and while she has a tremendous attitude about losing her house, we know that still must be difficult and will cause more difficulties with um, the repercussions of that. So Lord, thank you for um, saving her life. Uh, thank you for the children at the bus stop who saw flames coming out of the garage and were able to um, get her evacuated quickly and safely, Lord, for preserving her life. And Lord, we just pray now that you continue that promise and continue to um, provide the needs that come before. We know that you will, but Lord, we pray just um, that you be with her in a special way at this time. We thank you, Lord, for um, that maid and surgery did go well, and we do ask, Lord, that you continue to to um, bring healing to her leg and to her body, and that this uh, this operation would prove to be um, so helpful to her in eliminating some of the pain that she experiences and, and is able to be a little more mobile ultimately. Lord, we um, thank you for uh, keeping Chad and that whole crew of Spring Valley students safe uh, uh, out of state. And Lord, now we ask that you would bring them home safely as they, they make the trek back here to Allendale. And um, Lord, that even in the midst of of a unique fellowship experience like that. We know that you, are, you can be honored and praised and glorified. So Lord, we just um, ask for, for your traveling mercies on them. And Lord, we also don't want to um, pretend to, to acknowledge that a significant change has happened and is happening in our, in our country. And Lord, there are so many um, different opinions and views and frustrations and, and joys and all this depending on where people are coming from, Lord, but Lord, we know in the midst of that, as your believers, we serve a king, uh, Lord, and so as our king, we, we bow to you, and we bow to your sovereignty, we bow to your power, your authority, and so Lord, help us in the midst of these trying times as a country um, to not let it divide your believers or your church. We ask, Lord, that we would in the midst of these times, rise and shine and be a, a beautiful, fragrant offering in the midst of what to some smells like burning ashes. Lord, we pray um, that, that you would use us in this way. 
And then, Lord, we also pray this morning that as we have the opportunity to receive uh, new members and a, a new baptismal membership, that, um, that it would be a reminder to all of us of our vows as a church community um, to serve you, to serve one another, to build up, lift up, and encourage, to make strong the unity that we have in faith. Lord, uh, that it be those people would be blessed today and in their journey here at Spring Valley Church. Lord, we also pray that as we have the opportunity to look at your word and try to understand some of your teaching, that it would go to our hearts and filter through our hands, that it wouldn't just be something we hold, but something that we give. So Lord, help us today in all these things to bring honor and glory and beauty to you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, well, I'm just going to go ahead and ask our handful of new members, if you would journey up here on the stage, and I don't know how well social distancing is going to work up here, if we can make that happen, but we're just going to kind of spread out among uh, amongst the, the square footage that we have. So if you are one of those folks from the new members class, come on up here. Make your way up. There's Ed Brujink is first. Way to go, Ed. <laughs> oh, come on up. Um, as I mentioned in this class, I think it uh, took place in early, in fact, our last class, it was in March, um, was the last Sunday that we met before Corona shut everything down. So we had just finished our new members class. We had a date set to receive members. And here it is, um, the second Sunday in November, and we're finally getting around to it. Usually this would have been done in like April kind of thing. So um, welcome everybody. Good to see you all again in, in one place like this. So you may or may not remember, but we talked about in the class that there would be some questions that I would ask you in front of the congregation. I'm going to ask you now to recite that from memory. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Um, I'm actually going to read those questions, and all you have to do is give your answer if you do or you don't uh, agree with these. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and read all of the questions and just have you answer with one affirmative, I do. Because we know you already do, otherwise you wouldn't be on the stage right now, right? But we want the congregation to hear you do, okay? So let me read these to you. Uh, do you accept the gospel of God's grace in Jesus Christ revealed in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and the New Testament as the only way to eternal life? That, that comes through the scriptures of God. Do you acknowledge that you are a sinner and that you are sinful by nature, but by the grace of God alone, your sins have been forgiven and your old nature has been put to death so that you may be brought to a newness of life and set apart as a member of the body of Christ? Thirdly, do you promise to pray for yourself and for others? Seeking God's guidance as together, together, we grow in knowledge and understanding of the faith. Fourthly, do you promise to show in your own person the joy of that new life in Christ by active participation in the life of the church, by faithful attendance to worship and to service, to the offerings of your, your prayers and your gifts all to the glory of God? And then finally, do you promise to accept the spiritual guidance of the church, obeying its doctrines and its teachings, and to promise to walk in the spirit of Christian love with the congregation, seeking the things that make for unity, purity, and peace. Ed Grugin, what is your answer? Wonderful. Katie and Boris Melendez, what is your answer? Wonderful. Chelsea and Ryan Dornboss, what is your answer? Wonderful. And Joanna Pickard, what is your answer? Wonderful. Um, would you all please welcome these new members today? <laughs> so my next commercial would normally be, if you haven't met these folks yet, you know, grab a cup of coffee after service and shake their hand and maybe give them a hug or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, 
Um, my announcement now is if you haven't met these people, shake their hand, give them a hug. No, I'm just kidding. No, nobody, nobody throw anything at me. But make an effort. You can give them the fist. You can uh, you can say hello. My name is etc. Um, I'm hoping that many of you have met them and that they have met you. But we are a family together under the gospel of Jesus Christ, and these are our new family members, so we welcome you. We, we know that many of you have been with us for some time and some less time, um, but as you become more and more integrated to the body of Christ here, we just thank you for being with us and look forward to growing together in Christ's love as we do so. So you may be seated. Thank you finally for getting up here on the stage. <laughs> and I'm going to ask Joanna and Brinley to stick around here because we've got to do something a little bit more special yet. All right. So all of those um, things that, we, that you just promised to Joanna are very similar to what we ask in baptism. So I'm just going to share a couple additional ones that are unique to baptism today as Brinley prepares to get baptized today. She's not super excited about it, by the way. So um, we're going to try to make this as easy as possible. So um, I'm going to ask you, uh, do you promise to pray for your child and for yourself and others, asking for God's guidance? As together we look to grow in the knowledge and the understanding of faith, um, do you promise to show in yourself the true joy by active participation with your child? Um, and do you um, um, promise, very similar to what we said before, um, um, to, to adhere to the, the doctrines and the teachings and the, the correction and the help of, of your church members? What is your response? Wonderful. But now I'm going to ask our congregation to stand and just make one promise back to our Jan uh, Joanna as well. And that is this. Um, um, do you promise to seek God's guidance with this uh, new young sister in the faith um, and to, to um, provide Christian love and nurturing through your prayers, your encouragement, your teachings, and your affections to this family? If your response is affirmative, please say, we do. Amen. Wonderful. And you may be seated. And Brinley, I'm going to have you and your mom come right over here. And Brinley, we have a special verse based on your name. Do you know that your name has to do with the word sacrifice? <laughs> well, it does. And for that, we chose a special verse for you. It comes from the book of Psalms, the 54th one. And it says this, With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord. For it is good. Okay, so that's a special verse that you can hold on to for all your life. And we're just, remember when I said we're just going to put a little bit of water on your head? We're going to do that now, okay? <laughs> okay, I think I still have to. <laughs> I was uh, meaning to wear a mask. Are you okay if I wear this now? Because it seems weird. All right, we're just going to go for this. All right. Brinley R. Pickard, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May God's grace be with you. It doesn't matter where the water goes, just that it gets there, right? <laughs> Wonderful. And if you haven't got a chance to welcome Brindley or her water breaks her mom, but Brindley as well, and to the, the family here, please uh, make sure that she feels extra special and welcome today. And welcome to all the family members that are here as well to, to be a part of a special day. It's good to have you all here. Wonderful. Okay, let me just move this off to the side a minute. Quite an eventful morning already. It is that time of year that one of the things that stand out to me is aromas. And what I'm talking about, who's nervous I'm going to fall? 
<laughs> All right, I know what I get the comments on. What I am talking about is Christmas time. What are the smells of Christmas? Just come on, let's let our hair down today. Let's be active participants in church. Let's just, we're amongst friends. Talk to your pastor. What are some of the smells of Christmas? Pine trees. What? Cinnamon. Did somebody say sparkles? Oh. What's some other ones? Gingerbread. Gingerbread. What was it, Fred? Pecan pie. Pecan pie. Come to your house for Christmas this year. All right. What else? Cookies. The smell of cookies. Yes. Peppermint. Nutmeg. Right? It just, that, that's Christmas. It's the smell of Christmas. Let me, uh, let me throw something else out to you. What, just, just share, uh, what, what are just some of your favorite smells in general? If we, we didn't already say them. Cookies! We're still at cookies, yes! <laughs> what? <laughs> Pine cones, one of your favorite smells. What are, what's some other favorite smells you have? Apple cider, yes. Yeah. Coffee, yes, the smell of coffee is so good. Some people buy coffee just to smell it and don't even drink it, right? I've heard of people doing that, using as air fresheners in their cars even, right? Yeah. Does anybody have a smell that reminds you of a person? Like grandpa or a certain aftershave? Old Spice. Old Spice. That's Grandpa Hopkins, right? What did he wear? Oh. Well, there's, there's one that Tim's grandpa wears, and you say from time to time, that always reminds me of grandpa. Yes, you do. We can't fight in front of the whole church, but we will later. <laughs> yeah, there's a time to go along with it and a time to fight with it. So, um, my mom overdid it with um, Snuggles uh, fabric softener, and my friends at school would make fun of me because I smelled so much like, like snuggles kind of thing. It wasn't the most macho uh, compliment to get, right? You know? Um, but yeah, my point is that aroma, it does more than simply change the, the, uh, the, the, the smell of the, the area. It actually somehow creates, goes through our nostrils and creates like a filing system. In fact, um, bloodhound dogs have this incredible ability to file away the most minute um, um, atoms of smell and go right back to a place and know exactly what to look for and find the next one. It, it, it creates a file of, of memory. And so when I go uh, to a hunting cabin in Woodville, and I walk into that cabin, it's got a very distinct smell. And my files start flipping through the Rolodex in my head about these experiences and these memories and these things that have happened in my life at that hunting cabin, and it's good. And for some of you, there is a smell that reminds you of mom, reminds you of grandpa. Um, when you walked into their house, it smelled a certain way, and you smell that aftershave or cologne, and it brings you right back there. And so when you walk into a certain store, and it's fragrant right now, this time of year, with, with, with pine and, and nutmeg, it makes you remember Christmas and all those things. There's something bigger than just the smell itself going on. It, it correlates our hearts and our minds with something deeper. And I share all of that to, to share a passage of scripture that talks about a fragrance. And it's found in the second book of Corinthians as we are um, very slowly working our way into this series on the book of Corinthians. Before I get to the fragrant uh, uh, passage, I, I want to share something that happens before that. Um, if you remember, weeks ago when we started this series on Corinthians, we said that the, the first book of Corinthians had more to do with like foundational stuff. It, it was helping the new church and the new believers try to, try to figure out what it meant to be a Christian when it came to the hard questions that they were dealing with in their time and their age. 
and a lot of it had to do with um, their their conscience. Is it okay uh, coming from this? You know, a, a Jewish background in the Greek Roman world, where um, you know you couldn't eat certain kinds of meat, and now people are eating meat, and I have a, I have a guilty conscience if I eat that. Is that a sin? Um, there were questions about sexuality. It was a huge part of the first book of Corinthians about what was what was right and what was wrong, and, and so on and so forth. And the book of Second Corinthians is now about kind of we move beyond kind of knowing what what's right and what's wrong. But how do I live? How do I actually apply these things to my life? And I think um, both of those books are right where we're at in 2020 today. Um, there are still people who are questioning what is right and what is wrong. And there's still people questioning, how do I really make this thing work? How do I really live out my faith? How do I, how do I represent Christ? Or, or what am I doing uh, that's hurting the cause of Christ? Well, in the midst of that, Paul writes this book, and, and there's this issue that comes up because we're still humans, even as Christians, we still have sin in our hearts, we still have things going on in our lives, and there's a person who has caused controversy in their church. And because of that, they have to issue this thing called church discipline. Well, they didn't call it church discipline, I don't think, but that's what we call it today. And in fact, if you were, if you were listening closely, we actually referred to it in the vows that our new members just took. One of the things they agreed to was um, to take the counsel of the church in ways of correction, right? Um, it has to do with that, that, that we are accountable to each other when it comes to our lives within the body of Christ, that, that we watch out and encourage and correct. We rebuke and we love. And in the midst of that, this happens in, in, in this very book. He says, I am not overstating it at all when I say the man who caused all the trouble hurt all of you more than he hurt me. Most of you opposed him. Uh, and, and that was punishment enough. Now, however, it is time to forgive and comfort him. Otherwise, he may be overcome by discouragement. So I urge you now to reaffirm your love for him. Let me, this is a little bit of a side note of the heart of today's message, but let me just make a point here. If there is somebody in your life who at one time was an active participant in the church, any church, um, and is no longer attending any church because of this, because of church discipline, or let me even say it differently. If there's a person in your life who at one time was a follower of Christ, who, who was an active follower of Christ, and no longer is, and there is room within that, rest, in, in that relationship for forgiveness to still take place, forgiveness needs to take place. Paul says the reason why is so that the person does not let discouragement overcome them, but it goes on to say so that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are all familiar with his evil schemes. One of Satan's most craftiest tricks is to use religion against itself, to have the church bite its own tail. And Paul is issuing heavy uh, command here that there is a time to confront and there is a time to comfort. And if the confrontation phase is done, the comfort stage needs to happen. Um, we probably all know horror stories of somebody who at one time or another was um, excommunicated from the church or, or an incident occurred and they, they never came back. Paul's words are, if they have been forgiven by Christ, they need to be forgiven by us. As simple as that. All right.
I, I wanted to share that because it'll make this next passage make a little bit more sense. By the way, I'm in chapter 2 of 2 Corinthians, and I just read verses 5 through 10, and now I'm going to read verses 14 through 18. We're going to read a fair amount of scripture today. So verse 14, Paul says, But thank God he has made us his captives and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumphal procession. What does a triumphal procession look like in your mind? A parade, right? Of sorts, something along those lines. Okay. Now, he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. Our lives are like fragrance rising up to God, but this fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and by those who are perishing. To those who are perishing, we are a dreadful smell of death and doom, but to those who are being saved, we are like a life-giving perfume. You may think that sounds a little odd to language to mix into um, his words, his teaching at this time. The deal is, in Paul's day, when there was a victory uh, 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 in war, there would be a processional, a parade that would take place. And as the parade marched through the streets, um, very, uh, very, in a very big fashion, exploiting the spoils of the captives that they had taken from, uh, they would also release different fragrances throughout the parade. And so immediately, the people who are reading this would recognize the language he's talking about because it files memories, doesn't it? You know, that there would be a, a fragrance that would be inhaled that would take you right back to the last victory parade that you attended. Much like the way when you walk into, boy, how long has it you've done this, but when you walk into the movie theater and you smell that popcorn, right? It just brings you into a location and into a place. The readers hear this and they're thinking that aroma is so powerful. One commentator um, sheds a little light on it by saying this, when the day arrived, the people crowded the streets and filled every place from which a good view of the procession could be obtained. The temples were all open and decorated with flowers and incense was burned on every altar. Fragrant odors um, from burning spices were profusely scattered through the temple and along the streets, filling the air with perfume. Memorial Day parade in Genesis throughout Tootsie Rolls. But in Paul's day, they threw out perfume. The smell was undeniable. Now, let me reread part of that passage again to you. He uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. Our lives are like fragrances rising up to God. See what he does there? He takes the metaphor and puts application to it, doesn't he? The way those, those sweet perfumes fill the streets, he says our lives are like that, they, it, it, it rises up to God. But, there's a catch, there's a catch here. This fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and by those who are perishing. 
Can you testify that truth in your world? That, that those in, in your circle who are, who are on board with what you're on board with when it comes to faith, who are believers in Jesus Christ, the sweetness of the gospel, the good works, the, 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 the concept of tithing, of gathering together on Sunday, of, of fellowship, of all those things, it's a sweet fragrance to you, isn't it? You think of your, your, your most favorite believer, your, your uncle, your aunt, your grandpa, your mom, your dad, your mentor, whoever that person is, and you think about their lives, you know what that is? That's a fragrance. That's a sweetness. That's their very lives rising up to God. And, and to others who are like that, it, it's a sweet fragrance to all of us. We would all love your uncle, your grandpa, your mentor. Because because to us, it's the same thing. But Paul is not in denial. He says to others, to those who are perishing, to those who, who don't have the hope of Jesus Christ, it's a dreadful smell of death and doom. But to those who are being saved, to those who are being saved, we are a, a life giving perfume. You see, he doesn't say there, to, not just to those who are already saved, but those who are in the process of of, of coming to know Jesus, those who are, are, are open to it, that their hearts have a little crack in it, and the perfume is like, in my mind, it's just like squeezing in there, right? We are a life-giving perfume. We are, we are the essence of the goodness of Christ. That's what we are called to do in this, this passage. In fact, he goes on to say, we are like giving per, uh, perfume, and who is adequate for such a task as this? Imagine being a first century believer, hearing these teachings. Paul knows his audience, he says to them, who in the world is adequate to be responsible? Who, who, who's adequate to be that life giving perfume? And he goes on to tell them, you are, we are. Paul asks, who is adequate for the task of representing Christ? But you see, our adequacy comes from God and the power of his gospel. It doesn't come from us, it comes from God and the power that's already in the gospel. We know from the book of Matthew, he's already commissioned and sent us. We know that he gives us his Holy Spirit. We've been commissioned, we've been given a spirit to speak of Christ's love. We know that he keeps his, his eye on us. And as we realize that, that God has equipped us, we can begin to overcome those feelings of inadequacy. And you see, the change happens when we begin to re realize and focus on, not so much on, on what can be done through us, alone, or by ourselves, but what God can do through us and through you. Now he goes on from this passage to talk in the third chapter about this veil that when Moses came and got the the Ten Commandments, his face was so radiant that Moses had to put a veil over his face, and this all becomes both literal and metaphorical about an old covenant and a new covenant, and the one slipping away and the new one coming in. And he talks about this idea of the veil being taken away from people's faces, that they can see for the first time. And for some of us, we've had the, the joy of seeing people's veils removed from, from their hearts and from their heads and the, and, and the fragrance almost creeping in inside where it couldn't get to before. There's a newness there, but it, in this teaching he goes on to talk about 
this important phrase and this important word. And I want to take a moment to just read through that. He, he says, because, now I'm in chapter 5, for those of you trying to follow your pastor today. Chapter 5, verse 11, I should mention, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I get feedback on that sometimes. I use different translations. It's New Living today. All right, chapter 5, verse 11. Because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord. We understand this responsibility we have to be a fragrant offering. We work hard to persuade others. God knows that we are sincere, and I hope you know this too. We are commending ourselves to you again. No, we are giving you a reason to be proud of us so that you can answer those who brag about having a spectacular ministry rather than having a sincere heart. If it seems like we are crazy, <laughs> I mean, this is humor to me. If it seems like we're crazy, it's to bring glory to God. It's as if Paul is saying, I will act a fool if it helps people know Jesus. I'll do whatever it takes, if that's what it takes, for people to understand, for the veil to be removed, for the fragrance to work its way in, for me to do what I'm called to do, and power to do, as a Christian. If it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right minds, however, it is for the benefit of the kingdom. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died from our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive this new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. Folks, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the heart of what it means to be a follower. This is what it's all about today. Christ died to forgive us of our sins. He was raised from the grave for that reason. And Paul is saying there is a responsibility for those of us who have smelt the fragrance, who have received it in our hearts. So, we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. This means that everyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, and the new life has begun. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have you forgotten this teaching? Your old life is gone. You are a new creation in Jesus Christ. Praise God for that. Your sins are wiped away. Those of you who are living in the past, who are living in who you were, even though you've received Christ, you need to hear this. It's gone. You are new. The old has faded. The new has come. You are not who you were. You are a new creature only through Jesus Christ, who died for you to be new. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling to him. There it is. You've got a job to do. It's called a task. The task of reconciliation. It goes, now we go all the way, full circle, back to where we began. Remember, there's this dude in the church who was causing a problem. They disciplined him. By the way, in chapter 7, we see that he took the discipline. He didn't run from the church. He stayed, etc. It worked. Because that's always the job of the discipline, is to bring reconciliation. Now Paul talks about reconciliation of those who are far from God, who have the veil over the face, whose nose plugs are in, they can't get the fragrance. We have a task of reconciliation, of reconciling people to God. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. He gave it to us. He gave it to us. This is all going into one very important word we're going to get to really, really soon. So we are, and here it is. 
We are Christ ambassadors. It's all leading up to this one thing. If you're an ambassador, what's your job? You're from a country and you're representing your country to another country or another uh, king or whatever the case may be. Paul is very literally saying, you are Christ's representation. You are a aroma. You are a perfume. It's hunting season. One of the things that hunters work very hard to do is conceal odor, human odor. And we spend, I don't, honey, but other people spend hundreds and even thousands of dollars buying certain kinds of clothing. Uh, one of the most popular ones is actually called scent lock. Supposedly locks your odor in. There's too many Christians where it's set lock. There's too many Christians whose whose sweet perfume is not radiating to the nostrils of God. We are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Who in your life needs to hear the words, come back to God? Not only that, but can they hear it from you? Can they smell it from you? Will they receive it because of the sweet fragrance that you exude? For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the over, uh, to be the offering for our sins, so that we could be made right, be made right with Christ, uh, with, with, made right with God through Christ. We speak for Christ when we plead, "Come back to God." We have been given a task of reconciliation. We are God's ambassadors. And the way we know it's working is when you walk into a room, just like your uncle or your grandpa or your mentor, when they walk into that room, they exude something that smells beautiful to the nostrils of God and to those who believe. Friends, as we go forth this week, May we, may we offer the sweetest of perfume to a God who gave all he had. Let us be a people who bring reconciliation to those away from God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for your words that are creating us an understanding of the role that we have in this life. I pray, Father, now, as we try to take seriously the calling on our lives, that it's no small thing. As we are your ambassadors, we have a job to do. We have a task to complete. Help us, Lord, to not rely on ourselves, because we are inadequate, but to rely on you, who will work through us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. As we go forward and, and uh, make that our prayer, we know that God can break down all the walls that we have in our lives. Would you stand and sing this with us?
but that's a sweet aroma, right? Um, before I give our party blessing, just a little bit of uh, housekeeping here about how uh, where we're at with things. You all know um, if you're kind of if you're out in the world at all that this pandemic continues to go nuts and crazy. We're committed to worship here every Sunday. The only time we're going to close down is if uh, an outbreak happens inside the church, all right? So you can depend on coming here Sunday after Sunday. If that were to happen, we're still going to be here, some of us, preaching and doing worship or whatever as best we can. And uh, we perceive that to only be a week or two of closing if need be. You know, there's lots of closings going on in schools, and it's, we're just acknowledging that. In our practical level, um, we've been trying to experiment with... Uh, you're welcome to sit if you want. <laughs> I'm not going to be too long, but um, with having ushers dismiss us out, and we realize that the real issue that we're trying to accomplish through that is really the idea of social distancing. And we know that um, there's a lot of mature people in this room that can get, they don't need their hand held for that. So when I dismiss you today, um, some of you may want to sit and wait for others to leave in front of them, whatever the case may be, but we're just going to ask you to, to try to social distance on your way out of here. And we're going to ask you um, uh, to put your mask on as we do when you come in and when you leave, that, that you wear your mask during those times. And um, so if you put your mask back on, just wait until there's no, we're basically trying to avoid bottlenecks and clusters of people that are too tight together. So please, um, if you could respect those with sensitivities, some people want to get out of here and they can't because there's a bottleneck or whatever. That makes a lot of sense. So um, I'm not going to dismiss you row by row. I'm just going to ask you to use common sense and social distance. Makes, does that make sense? Can we agree to do that as a team, as a church? All right. Um, um, and then one more reminder. Um, we're obviously not taking an offering. Just a reminder, there's drop boxes out there. You can still give online. You guys have been awesome with all that. I'm actually going to give a little report in a couple weeks on how well that's been going. But keep up the good work on that, okay? Now, as you prepare to leave this place, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide in you now and forevermore. Go in peace and be a beautiful fragrance for God this week. Amen.